select a statement that is not equivalent to the following statement. If it's raining, I need a jacket. And we're given four options. In order to simplify this, we want to write each of these four options in symbolic form. So let's start with writing the first given statement in symbolic form. Notice it's an if-then statement. If it's raining, then I need a jacket. So let's call P, it is raining, and Q, I need a jacket. So this statement would look like P implies Q, or if P, then Q. We'll take those definitions of P and Q and rewrite each of the four given statements in symbolic form. And now we start to see the value of writing things in symbolic form because we can apply our consistent systematic rules to determine equivalent statements, where in English sometimes things can be vague and, and not quite straightforward enough to tell what's equivalent and what isn't. But writing things in logical form can help us see that. For A, we have, it's not raining, or I need a jacket. So we know we're going to have the or operator in the middle. It's not raining is the negation of P. I need a jacket is Q. So not P or Q. For part B, I need a jacket or it's not raining. I need a jacket, that's Q. Or it's not raining, that's not P. Notice that's exactly what we have in part A, just reversed. Not P or Q, Q or not P. Part C, if I need a jacket, it's raining. So if Q, then it's raining P. Part D, if I don't need a jacket, so if not Q, then it's not raining, which is not P. These four symbolic statements are equivalent to the four English statements. Now, to see which one of these is equivalent to the first given, P implies Q, all we'll do is build a truth table that will include a column for each of these, and we'll compare those columns to P implies Q, this column right here. So let's start. We're going to need not P and not Q at various points. So we have P and Q given. Not P, we reverse P. Not Q, we reverse Q. Then for P implies Q, again, the implication is only false if the condition is met and the conclusion is not. So if P is true and Q is false, that's the only time P implies Q will be false. That only happens in the second row, so otherwise it's true. For the next column, not P or Q, so we look at not P, the third column, and Q, the second column, combine them with or, which is true anytime at least one of them is true. So that's going to look like true, false, true, true. It's only false in the second row because both of them are false. Neither one of them is true. Q or not P, well that's exactly the same thing. We're combining the same two columns with the same operation. It's just written differently in English, but we're going to get the same truth column. Notice that the two we've got so far are both equivalent to P implies Q. So these first two are equivalent to P implies Q. Then let's look at Q implies P. So now Q will be our condition and P will be the implication or the conclusion. And this will be only false if Q is true and P is false. That happens in the third row. So it's going to be true, true, false, true. This is the first one that's not equivalent to P implies Q. Then lastly, not Q implies not P. We'll use not Q and not P. And this will be true unless not Q is true, not P is false. So if looking through there, the one case where not Q is true and not P is false 
happens there in the second row. So otherwise it's true. We get true, false, true, true. And this too is equivalent to the original conditional statement. So that one isn't equivalent. The one that isn't equivalent is part C. If I need a jacket, it's raining. In other words, if we have an if-then statement, we can't flip it around necessarily and say if Q then P. That's called the converse of a statement and it's not necessarily true. However, we can flip the direction of the arrow if we negate both of them. Saying P implies Q is the same as saying not Q implies not P. That's what we call the contrapositive of a conditional statement and we'll see examples of that later. But that's logically equivalent to the original conditional statement.